Hello, my name is Rickard, and in this tutorial, I wanna introduce you to the basics of blending modes in Photoshop. Blending modes is one of the key features that allows you to composite images in Photoshop. By mixing one layer with another layer in various ways, you can create all manner of visual effects. Now there's a lot of blending modes in Photoshop. However, there's four of them that you're gonna be using 95% of the time. And what I wanna do in this tutorial is introduce you to what those blending modes are and also get you familiar with what the other blending modes are so that you have a basic understanding of them. Now in this, I am using a file which will help to show the various blending modes. If you want to download that and follow along, I have included a link to it in the description of this video. So go ahead, download that, and then let's dive into Photoshop. Okay, so let's go ahead and close this file. I'm gonna do that with Command W, and then Command D, and then I'm gonna do Command O for open, and I wanna open the Layer Tutorial PSD. And first, let's go ahead and add some masks in here. But before we do that, I wanna introduce you to the concept of channels. So you'll notice we have these three palettes up here. I did mention in my first lesson that these three were quite important and that's why we have them here. So we've spoken about the layers panel. The next one I wanna talk about here is the channels panel. And with channels, you have your red, your green, and your blue. Those are channels that are gonna be in every RGB files. If your file is CMYK, meaning it's a different color mode, you're gonna see different channels for cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. However, the other thing you can see here is you can save selections inside channels because a selection is essentially just a mask and a mask is just a black and white image. So you can kind of think, if you understand that in Photoshop, a mask, a selection, and a black and white channel are all the same thing. If you have one, you have the other. All that you have between them is a few clicks. So here I've got a Fox selection and a model selection. What you can do is hold down command and then click on the thumbnail and it'll load that selection. So you'll notice I now have the selection of my Fox. Now in my layers palette, you wanna make sure you've got RGB selected here. In my layers palette, I can turn on the Fox layer, make sure the Fox layer is selected, and then click on the mask icon. And there you go, our, ma our Fox is nicely cut out for this scene. I'm gonna select the model layer, go back to my channels, load this selection by holding down Command or Control on a PC, and then clicking on the thumbnail. You'll notice that my little icon changes when I hold down Command. That means it's gonna take that information and turn it into a selection. You can actually do this with any layer and with any path by hovering over the thumbnail and holding down command. Very important little trick. Okay, so I'm clicking on model selection. You can see I now have that selection loaded into Photoshop and I'm gonna add a mask. I can do that with my mask icon here or here. Those, these are basically the same thing, just in the taskbar, it's brought it to you here. So I'll click on that and you can see everything except for her and the logs have disappeared. And then let's go ahead and with our butterflies, we're just gonna put these into place. And for this, we're gonna use a transform. So we'll do Command T for transform. Just rotate this and make it a bit smaller. So all of our butterflies are in the scene here something like this. All right, so now I wanna talk about blending mode. So, so far, all these layers are using the normal blending mode. And the normal blending mode is the pixel sits right on top. The only blending that's occurring is if there is transparency or if you change the opacity of your layers. So that's what normal is. Now you can see we have all these others and each of these blending modes will change 
what is happening or how your layer is blending with the layers below it. So let's go ahead and make a circle. I'm going to make a new layer here. So we're going to click on this and we can double click on the text and we can call this circle. Then with my marquee, my elliptical marquee, I'm going to click right in the center of the image and then start dragging out. Now, after I've started dragging out, I'm going to hold down Option. And you'll notice that it's changed it so that the origin point of the circle is in the center. And then, while still holding Option, I'm going to add Shift into the mix. And that'll keep my circle perfectly circle. So, just like that. Now, after I've done my selection, so long as I'm still on a selection tool, whether that's the lasso or the marquee, You'll notice as I hover over my selection, my tooltip changes. So what this means is when I click and drag, I'm going to move the selection rather than making a new selection. So you can see that here. And then I can just kind of snap this to the middle. And you'll see when it snaps to the middle, my cursor changes from black to white. That means it's snapped into the middle. All right, and then go to my gradient tool go up make a linear gradient and then here I'm gonna go from black to white and we'll just go from the top click drag to the bottom of the circle so now we have a, a gradient that goes from black to white and we can deselect and remember our shortcut for deselect is command D and then I'm gonna default back to my move tool and you should make it a habit when you're working in Photoshop that after you've done a function with one of these other tools and you're happy with your result, to just hit V on your keyboard so that you're back on the Move tool. That way you don't accidentally paint or accidentally add a gradient somewhere in your file that you don't want. All right, so now let's quickly look at the blend modes. You're going to see as I start moving down my cursor and hovering over these, how the blending between our gradient and what's underneath is changing based on all these different blend modes. Now these are a lot and they're probably a little overwhelming. So what I'm gonna do in this tutorial is just teach you the three most important blend modes outside of normal. So normal is your default. That's the one you're gonna be using I would say 90% of the time, or maybe 80% of the time. And then the other 20% of the time, you're going to be using primarily three other blending modes. So let's talk about those. The first one is multiply. Now, anytime you have white and you want the white to disappear, you're going to use multiply. What multiply does is it basically takes whatever your image is, and if you were if you printed it on a piece of acetate or a piece of transparent film and then put it on top of the rest of your document, that's what Multiply does. Anywhere where there was paper or white disappears and the colors themselves sit on top of your image. So here you can see the ball. Where the ball is white down here, there's nothing. It just disappears. But where it's black, it sits on top of your image. So let me go ahead and turn off our circle and let's go ahead and take this overlay and change the blend mode to multiply. And you can see that it's now multiplying this on top of the rest of our image. All right, let's turn off that one, turn back on our circle. The next one is screen. Now screen does the opposite of multiply. So here, anything that's black is gonna disappear. So if you imagine your image is the backdrop, your screen, and this top layer is being projected onto it. So anything that's black is going to disappear, and anything that's lighter than what's underneath will show up. So here, because our circle is black at the top, it just disappears entirely. But down here where it's white, it's blending on top, and where it's 100% white, you can't see any of the image underneath it. So that's the screen blending mode. Then the last one I want to show you is overlay. And overlay 
kind of does a mix of both. So if the top layer here is darker than the image underneath, it's going to make that part of the image darker. If it's lighter, it's going to make it lighter. So it's almost like a dodge and burn with a single layer here. You can see the white parts are burning the image and the dark parts are dodging or making the, that part of the image darker. Those are the three most important blending modes and those are really the only three we're going to cover in this lesson. There are other blending modes. Most of these are a variation on multiply. Most of these are a variation on screen. Most of these are a variation on overlay. And then these are process. So these create various strange effects. You can see this creates kind of a negative effect. This creates a negative effect with some exclusion and so forth. So these all create kind of processes and then these affect color only so or luminosity only. So these are kind of color based. These are process. These are overlay. These are screen. These are multiply and those are your normal. So that's the general blending modes. OK, so let's go ahead and turn off this circle layer. And what I want to show you here is how we can actually use these blending modes artistically within our composite. So earlier I had put this on multiply. I also mentioned that with uh, multiply white disappears and with screen black disappears. Well, with overlay gray disappears. So let's put this layer on overlay and you can see here that the middle of our image, which is gray on this layer, is not being affected, but the outer edges, which are black on this image, are being affected. And you can see as I turn that on and off, you can see that effect taking place. And then here, this is on normal. Let's put this on screen and you can see how I can use that to add a nice glowing light that sits nicely on top of our image. And there you can kind of see how you can use blending modes in a composite. So there you have it. Those are the basics of blending in Photoshop. And that also completes this mini series of lessons on getting started in Photoshop 2023. This is in fact the first part out of three for my new compositing course, which is inspired by a Norman Rockwell painting. And if you're interested in that, I will show you a trailer of it here. Stop, y'all. All right, so now, <laughs> okay, so now we are going to do our Norman Rockwell self-portrait.